call our meeting to order here for our 7 p.m. regular trustee meeting for Tuesday, June 1st, 2021. Welcome, everyone. Um, I believe Mr. Warwick has an invocation. I'll ask everyone who's able to to please stand for that. Thank you. Dear God of reconciling hope, as you guided your people in the past, we ask that you guide us through the turmoil of the present time and bring us to the place of flourishing where our unity can be restored, the common good served, and all shall be made well. For those involved in conflicts, the innocent, the guilty, the ill, orphaned, widowed, dead, politicians, peacemakers, relief workers, we ask that you bring these folks involved in conflict, comfort, compassion, sustenance, repentance, forgiveness, healing, tears, and love, and a peace that can endure. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Now we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Porter, good evening. Would you please call the roll? Mr. LaBarbera? Here. Mr. James? Here. Mr. Weedman? Present. Thank you very much. We remain somewhat under pandemic conditions, although we are uh, gradually reopening things here in the township. State law allows us to meet electronically uh, or in person at this time. And so we're having a hybrid meeting again this evening with one of the trustees appearing remotely along with our fiscal officer and our law director. Um, we also have the ability to attach electronic signatures to any documents which require a signature. Do I have each of your consent to attach your electronic signature to anything which might require it that we vote upon this evening? I do. Yeah, Mike, it's you do. I do. All right, we have consent from everyone necessary there. Uh, with that, uh, we move on to approval of minutes. We have our May 18th, 2021 trustee meeting minutes. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Is there a second? And there is a second. Any discussion? Mr. Porter, will you call the roll for the vote, please? Mr. LaBarbera? Aye. Mr. James? Aye. Mr. Weedman? Aye. All right, next we have public comments. Do we have anyone signed up for that? Uh, yes, sir. We have a uh, Mr. Goldberg. All right. Mr. Goldberg, uh, you're muted. If, if you could unmute, uh, you have four minutes to speak in our meeting, and we invite your comments on any topic. We will ask if you choose to continue viewing the meeting afterward, if you would get out of the Zoom call and go to the Vimeo feed, which is available through our website after your comments. Um, we would appreciate that. Uh, if you're ready to proceed, though, we can start the countdown timer here. Are you ready, sir? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead. Nice to hear from you. Thank you. Good to be here. Um, and, uh, sorry, about, if you would state your residence address first. Sorry, Richard Goldberg. I live at 8354 Jeanette Lane, 45249. I live about three doors down from Sycamore Township. I live in Sims Township <clears throat> on the east side of Snyder Road near the intersection of Kemper. Uh, diagonally across the street is a parking lot for Cincinnati Hills, which is the issue I'm addressing uh, tonight. Um, and I have uh, nothing against Cincinnati Hills. I think it's a terrific school academically and, and physically. The physical plant is terrific. And, and I would consider them a very good neighbor. I'm, I'm glad to have them in our neighborhood and to be a neighbor of theirs. However, um, I have to respectfully disagree with, I think, the position of Sycamore Township is with respect to what they've done with the parking lot by allowing uh, a commercial establishment, the restaurant across the street, to park their cars in that lot. And this was this matter came up last year. We, we talked about it with Cincinnati Hills and Sycamore and it was resolved. Uh, and so I, I don't wanna get into all the history because I don't have time, but I do wanna say there was a, a litigation when, when that property was rezoned from residential to, um, to allow it for a school lot. And, and I have a copy of the court order incorporating the separation agreement which talks about Cincinnati Hills must strictly uh, adhere to the conditions. 
condition 4C in the settlement agreement says all access points to that lot must be closed by 9 p.m. unless it is a school function. This is not being done. That lot's being occupied after 9 p.m. by a private establishment, the restaurant. That's in violation of the order incorporating the settlement agreement. Paragraph 4L says there should be no commercial use of the parking lot. And contrary to what Cincinnati Hills position is and what this township's position is, I've looked up commercial activity and the Sycamore Code, and it includes uh, enterprise carried on for profit by an owner or licensee. And in this case, th this uh, spring house is a licensee of Cincinnati Hills. Cincinnati Hills is allowing them to use that lot um, for no fees, and, and that's for a commercial purpose. I can't see how anyone can say that doesn't fall under the definition of commercial activity. I mean, if, if the restaurant had a truck there or full food trucks in that lot, it's a commercial activity. Allowing that to be done is just contrary to the court order. Plus allowing cars in there after nine o'clock at night is contrary. Those gates are supposed to be locked at nine o'clock. They're not. There, there's an entrance on Camper Road. With or without a gate, I don't know, but the, the gate on Snyder's lock but they're coming in from Camper Road. I think there should have been a gate there, and if there's, there is a gate there, it should be locked. Uh, <clears throat> what, what, um, well, as I said, this thing was resolved last year. And then since Randy Brunk, the head of school, is retiring this month or has retired, the new regime at Cincinnati Hills uh, is allowing the, the um, restaurant people to park there. Um, what this tells the Sycamore Township landowners and property owners is that they can do what they want with their property. They can disregard zoning, land use orders. They can disregard court orders. And the township is gonna arbitrarily decide who to enforce against and who not. And that's wrong. That's totally wrong. It's discriminatory and it's arbitrary to decide who to uh, uh, enforce against and who not to. I, th these zoning laws should be applied equally and they're not in this case. Lastly, if it comes up that well, it, then there's no harm done, there is potential harm done. These young servers from the restaurant walk across Snyder Road. Snyder Road and Kemper Road are speed roads. Uh, speeders are there constantly. It's dangerous when they walk over there late at night. There's drunk drivers. There's a safety issue that's involved. And, and as I look at that agreement, that's commercial activity, number one and number two. Um, the lot should be closed at nine o'clock pursuant to the court order and it's not. And I'm just asking Sycamore to reconsider its position uh, that that's proper use of the, of the property. It's contrary to the Thank order. You, when this was rezoned from residential to its use now, and that's why there's a settlement agreement that was agreed that this is a school lot. It's not a commercial activity lot. It shouldn't be used for commercial purposes by a for-profit business. And it is. Thank you, sir. We, we've Thank we've you. passed your four minutes and we do appreciate your comments. I, I do have a question because I'm the new guy here. Was Sycamore Township a party to the lawsuit that resulted in the settlement agreement you were discussing? Yes, they are. Okay. And what, what was the date of that settlement agreement? Uh, well, I Mr. Miller has a copy of it. Oh, okay, he, he just alerted me to that. Well, we'll, we'll certainly take a look at that. And uh, if, if there's something the township needs to do, we'll look into what we need to do. But we appreciate, I appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Okay. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you. And, and again, if you could pop out of the Zoom call, you're welcome to con continue watching on the Vimeo feed that you can find on our website. If, if you don't here. Thanks for having me. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Do we have anyone else signed up to speak? I don't believe so, sir. All right. No one else is on the Zoom call. This time I don't have texts from people telling me they're trying to get in, so that's good. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we will move on then to the Sheriff Patrol report. We have Sergeant Kreider here. Uh, how are you this evening, sir? Uh, okay. All right. What have you got for us? Nothing uh, going on in the township the last week or two, right? A lot. Yeah. A lot going on. Um, statistically, I don't have a whole lot as far as uh, what we've done as far as arrest or citations. Uh, I was told I was going to get a report and I didn't get one. Um, what I do have um, is just off our RMS system uh, analytics. We had um, 102 reported incidents, 88 of those being criminal. That's outside of uh, uh, domestic disputes or field interrogation reports. Uh, 57 auto crashes, uh, one of those being a fatal auto crash that you're aware of. Um, do you have any questions regarding the fatal auto crash? Is this in relation to the incident that involved the fire? The... No. Okay. That's a separate incident. We had 
fatality out on the interstate. Oh, yes, I am. I 71, right at Montgomery Road. Right. Um, was an elderly driver. Was that a medical a medical emergency? Was that a medical problem? Uh, originally, we thought that it may have been a medical issue, uh, but we suspect that it may have been a distracted driving yeah. incident. We're not 100% sure on that. But uh, was anyone else injured? The, the, the way the crash happened would be consistent with a medical emergency or distracted driving. Hmm. Was anyone else injured other than the driver of the vehicle who, who was a single, single vehicle? Okay. Single vehicle. Arm crash. Thank goodness for that, at least. Yes. Yeah. All right. And yeah. the, uh, any questions about the incident last week? Did you have an update on that? The murder and the uh, carjacking that occurred, uh, the individual and the house burning. Do you have any update on that? It's, it's a lot easier just to explain it from the beginning of what transpired. Um, it was a very dynamic situation. Uh, our officers were dispatched for a shots fired. Uh, as they were arriving on scene, they uh, were updated that a person had been shot. Um, when they arrived, they found the female victim suffered from gunshot wounds in front of the uh, condominiums. As they were attending to her and uh, securing the scene, clearing the apartment, we got updated that there was a carjacking on Euclid Road. Um, female and her kids uh, were accosted in their front yard by a male suspect, and the description of that suspect was the same that we were gathering at the same time of our homicide suspect. Um, he had robbed her of her car at gunpoint, tried to kidnap her. Uh, he fled in the van, went to his home in Silverton on Home Street. Um, went inside the house, doused himself with gasoline, and also tried to burn his house down or him, and kill himself in the fire. Um, lit himself on fire, exited the front of his house. One of the neighbors came to his rescue, kind of put him out. He hops in the van, manages to still drive with 90% burns all over his body to a house and Cincinnati uh, District 4 area. Um, his family members drove him to the nearest Cincinnati Fire Station. Cincinnati Fire uh, transported him to University Hospital. And he succumbed to his injuries the following day, I believe. Do we know anything about the motive behind any of this? Uh, it was an, uh, from family members, um, it, we gathered that this was an on again, off again type of relationship. Um, may have been um, some stalking issues and following her around. We had no prior reports or contacts with these two individuals, the victim or the uh, homicide suspect. So we we had no history, no no awareness to what their relationship status was that we could find in one yeah. But uh, very dynamic situation. We had three major crime scenes, obviously. Three minor crime scenes where we had to uh, you know, secure evidence, witnesses. It was a, it was a mess. And did the female victim have children also? She did have children. Uh, and they weren't there at the time. So I think that's... Thankfully. It could have been much worse. Um, one thing that was uh, very beneficial for you know a, a crime scene that uh, expands multiple jurisdictions is having the manpower to cover it. Uh, being a supervisor on the scene, I was able to pull Lincoln Heights officers to go and secure the scene in the Cincinnati area. Uh, obviously, we had Columbia Township and Silverton units on the uh, incident in Home Street. And, uh, you know, we had enough Sycamore units to cover the major crime scene of 
the uh, the homicide. Mm -hmm. So it worked out really well. We had covered and locked down pretty quickly. We developed the suspect information probably within uh, 15, 20 minutes of being there. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, it happened so quickly in such a short time frame from homicide to carjacking to the house fire in Silverton, all yeah. within probably 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. No officers injured, though, correct? No officers injured, no innocent bystanders injured. We did have a carjacking victim in the mm -hmm. process, but she was not injured. So, bad day. Exactly. Very busy. Yeah, and hopefully an isolated incident. We never hear like something like this again here in the town, Joe. Uh, here in the last uh, month, and this is off topic of that, we haven't had, we've had an uptick of auto thefts. Um, I think we've kind of nailed that uh, with the suspect that we've mm -hmm. uh, signed uh, two two counts of uh, auto theft on. Uh, the majority of those are. Well, just about all of them have occurred around the Kimlin Town Center. Mm -hmm. DoorDash uh, delivery drivers pulling up to restaurants, leaving their cars running. Uh, <laughs> what could go wrong? Right? <laughs> what could go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> with all the foot traffic around the Kimlin mm -hmm. Town Center, yeah. with uh, some individuals there that are up to no good, it's just a crime of opportunity. There's nothing we can do about that yeah. other than <clears throat> we see them, sign them for mm -hmm. leaving their vehicles running unattended. So you have a, a suspect in mind or a suspect under arrest? We have them under arrest. Oh, okay. Okay. And subsequently, uh, the auto thefts around the town center have gone down. Hmm. So and this is someone that we've arrested before, and we recognized on uh, video mm -hmm. on one of the one of the auto thefts. So oh, good work. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anything else for us? That's it. That's all, all right. I, have. I hope you don't have that much to report again next time we see you. <laughs> So, but thank you very much. Any questions for Sergeant Kreider from anyone? All right. Thank you. Thanks for all you and your colleagues do. Well, let's let's move on then to the EMS and fire report. Chief, what do you have for us? Not uh, that dramatic, I hope. No, no. I mean, we were involved with the sheriffs mm -hmm. on the, the same incident. So um, he pretty much described it out to how it went down. Um I just I have just a couple things on the COVID stuff, and uh, unless anything comes up in the future, we'll probably stop doing these COVID updates. It's very minute at this point. We've only got one resident that's uh, home right now, and then um, I got an email from the health department, and they do not have anybody signed up through the homebound. Uh, system that needs vaccines. We did give 12 residents their, their vaccines for the homebound, and I guess that's all that needs it. And so much available everywhere else. I think it's pretty much a uh, kind of over it, over with at this point. Mm -hmm. um, people can get them just about anywhere, really. So uh, unless Unless we get any kind of a spike or something that's worth reporting, I'll, I'll probably just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. So, but so everything is going good as of midnight tonight. The mass restrictions are off, and uh, I think everybody's kind of getting healthier. So, yeah, very good. But hopefully, this is water over the dam. Yeah. <laughs> very good. And on a lighter note, although yesterday was Memorial Day, not a light day. It's a day to remember those who mm -hmm. gave everything for the country. But you and you guys participated in the parade. I wish I could have been there with my fellow trustee. They had a family event going on that mm -hmm. I could be involved with. But um, everything go well with that? Yeah. Yes, yeah, very well. It seemed to be a, a, a longer parade this year. A little, a little more a little more people were in it. And uh, it uh, weather was nice. Everything went well. Excellent. Cooper's dog, Millie, was one of the highlights of the parade. Is that right? She was all dressed up. <laughs> she was fashioned out. <laughs> Miss Millie is a pretty and popular girl. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. Any questions for the chief from anyone? No. Nope. That's all I got. No. All right. Let's move on. Roads, maintenance, and recreation. Who wants to go first, Tracy? I will let uh, Mr. Petty go first. All right. Gentlemen, we had uh, 
Last Saturday was our uh, nature walk at Bechtold Park. It was a creek walk for kids. Uh, Sarah Meadows from Hamilton County Soil and Water came and gave a presentation uh, for, I think we had about uh, five kids there, a few residents from um, Deer Park, a resident from uh, Mason and her child. And, uh, and we walked through the creek, looked at uh, some of the water, the, the habitat in the stream and and she gave a, a nice presentation for all the kids, uh, and it was it was enjoyable. It was a little cold, but it was nice. Um, uh, we have a resident from Sturbridge who would like to install a little free library at uh, Bob Meyer Park. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with it or with those or not, but mm -hmm. they basically looks like a small house. You just put it on a, a stand, and they load it with books, and people from the neighborhood can take and, and leave books as they want, but. I told her that I would uh, I would ask and see what you guys thought about that if that was something that uh, we'd be able to go forward with. Um, it's they are most of them are about um, uh, two foot by three foot or so. Mm -hmm. They're not real large, and I think this has maybe come up in the past before. Yes, and I don't has. I don't know what the what the answer was on it before, but I told her that I would bring it up and, and see how you guys felt about it. There's one in front of St. Vincent's on Montgomery Road, my, I think. Also. My main question would be to Mr. Desai about our liability if there's some inappropriate material dropped off in there that a child gets and brings home. I mean, we don't have anybody manning this, obviously. Uh, Jason? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I um, have some experience with this in uh, Indianapolis. Uh, I have a son who lives in downtown Indianapolis or uh, uh, north of downtown. And um, many of the street corners have these boxes um, and they are normally on, what I, what I noticed this past weekend, they're normally on, actually on private property, not on public property. They're, they're outside of the right-of-way. And they are usually maintained by the people who, whose property it's on. In other words, they're usually going through the box to make sure that something inappropriate isn't put into the box. Uh, but they're used constantly in, uh, in Indianapolis. I'm told that it's an extremely successful program. And it might be something we want to just take a peek at and see if, uh, uh, if we might be able to, uh, to institute something like that. Utilizing, I would suggest utilizing uh, personal residences uh, on the corner like for instance, most of them were, uh, there was a sidewalk and then it was just on the other side of the sidewalk. So that pe it was actually on private property, but um, people were able to stand on the sidewalk and, and actually get into the, to the, to the box to, to uh, trade books or whatever. So uh, I don't think it would hurt to take a look at it. I think it's a good program for sure. Tracy, we've, we've discussed this before. Haven't we? And we talked yeah. about this and wouldn't that be, we were talking about, I think, Bechtold Park. A we bit. talked about it. Yeah. So, Basically the same thing that uh, Mr. Weedman just said. You didn't feel that it was uh, proper to have on public property without somebody being able to monitor it all the time. Okay, so I guess going back to Jason then, to find out if that person on Sturbridge, whoever it is, is it connected with the Boy Scouts or anything like that? I think the Boy Scouts, one of the, one of the groups. Or with the Boy Scouts. Boy Scout, the one. Yeah. No, this isn't connected with the Boy Scouts. I believe that she works with the program that yeah. actually puts the things, to, uh, puts the boxes together. So, and I would have to look at it exactly to see what the what the name of the organization was. It was not the Boy Scouts, but uh, I mean, I could always ask her. She lives on Sturbridge, so she may be, you know, willing to put it in her in her yard. I think it was the idea from her was if it was in the park, then more people might visit the park, then come by her house, possibly. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I told yeah, her I would get would back. Be a good and location, the details, park so. would be a good location. I think, according to Mr. Wiegman, to just make sure that she's monitoring monitoring what the books that go in there, the literature that's in there. Yeah, what she would, what she originally said she would provide all of the books that would go in it and then also maintain it. Mm -hmm. So... I can always continue to talk, continue the conversation with her mm. and see if she's, you know, at all interested in having it at her house. And then if not, we can she continue to look at That's right. There you go. The neighborhood. <laughs> well, or the HOA has property at the front where their sign is, but that's across the road yeah, from, the, yeah, kind of from the park. And that would be dangerous to cross. Mm. Um, Rockwarren also has uh, property there too. So, or Yavna, 
sorry, which is it now? I'm Rockhorn. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, they might be interested in working with the neighborhood association on it. It's a, it's a good idea, I think, as long as, and, um, as we've said, somebody just keeps an eye on what goes in there. So mm-hmm. kids don't see things they shouldn't. And, yeah. and we could also approve something on a conditional basis, of course, too, and uh, check in every once in a while. And if we notice it's not being maintained, we could revoke our approval. So find out some more details. On, okay. In principle, it's a good idea. Jason, I think we at one point in time we had an Eagle Scout that was interested in building one of those uh, little houses. Little houses that it's got it's it, it's in Indianapolis, and I think I've seen them in uh, suburban Chicago as well. They're actually like look like little houses with little roofs on them, and yeah. then it's got a door that opens up. And I thought we had a uh, an Eagle Scout that wanted to try to build one of those at one point in time, if I remember correctly. And I think that's maybe where the uh, Boy Scouts kind of uh, the Boy Scout thought came in, but. Um, um, I, I'm not sure that I think it's a good, I don't, I don't know, I'd yield to Tracy on this, but I'm not sure if I, I think it's a good idea to uh, put in the park because of, uh, uh, you know, we've had some vandalism issues in the past and um, that may be an easy target for vandalism. So I, I think it might not be such a good idea. And, and frankly, I kind of like the fact that somebody will take personal uh, ownership of the box itself to make sure that there's nothing inappropriate in the box. So. Okay. What else do you have for us? So I also have a, uh, a student and resident from Sycamore, student of MND and resident from Sycamore Township would like to do some service work in the parks. Uh, she's going to team up with a nonprofit organization, Keep Cincinnati Beautiful. Uh, but so I figured if you guys were okay with that, I was just going to coordinate with them times that they could come into the parks and do some light uh, maintenance. Yeah, I think that's great. Pulling weeds or you know trash yeah. picking up stuff like that. No mm-hmm. operating equipment or anything. Can we check the insurance, the insurance, 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 insurance uh, legal problems? Any problem with that? Uh, Deepak, let me let me work through with Jason a little bit. Get a little more detail. You know, I mean, I don't want to make any of this stuff overly cumbersome when it's you know um, um, you know. Uh, philanthropic work of this nature. So um, Jason, I'll get with you tomorrow, get a few more details and then figure out whether we need to really be concerned about insurance. Or just a release possibly even from the individual wanting to do the work. Yeah. yeah. And we already have a relationship with Keeps Inside Beautiful. They help us okay. every year on our trash bash events. Mm-hmm. Great. All right. And uh, other than that, the Parks Advisory Committee met uh, last Monday, May 24th, and we decided on uh, some movies, and I can give you guys a list of the movies uh, that we selected. Um, I'll just read them off to you real quick. Horton, Here's a Who, The Sandlot, Big, Cheaper by the Dozen, Home Alone. We were kind of thinking of possibly doing a Christmas in July since uh, everybody maybe got their Christmas canceled last year. Uh, Percy Jackson, Sea of Monsters, uh, and Rookie of the Year. So if you guys wanted to look at those uh, movies, see if there was anything in there that you kind of agreed with, disagreed with, let me know, uh, and then we can always look back over them. And also, uh, UDF is going to bring an ice cream truck to the movie events on July 10th and August 21st and uh, give ice cream out as a uh, uh, kind of like a – an advertisement they said so yeah publicity so Mm -hmm. they'll be at two of the events for the movies giving out ice cream for free and then we should have kona ice probably at the other ones so jason can you you send us those uh that list of those movies yeah yeah i definitely will other than that that's all i have and we have princess bride coming up in a few weeks also right yes princess bride be the first one on june 19th awesome very good thanks for all that thanks to the parks advisory committee for being involved with all this and helping to plan this concerts coming up and there was a volunteer cleanup event also in kenwood gardens recently i understand that some of the parks advisory committee meetings were committee members were working on so thanks to them for that all right um tracy what have you got for us Uh, just a couple quick updates uh 2021 road program is moving along uh, rapidly, they completed uh, Heitmeyer subdivision completely today. Uh, they still have the seal, but that's it. And they've done a great job. It really looks good. Uh, so the the uh, <clears throat> curbs were also completed today in the area behind the hospital. So they are coming in 
next week uh, to start with uh, milling and base repairs and paving over there. And when that's done, all that will be left is Dillon Bay. Now, of course, that's dependent on the weather. We're supposed to get one and a half inches of rain tomorrow and some more during the week, so that may get pushed back. Coogan Mills moving ahead, and it's on track. They were supposed to pour today, but uh, they were not there because they were pushed back from rain on Friday. So chances of them pouring tomorrow are extremely slim. So that may be pushed back a little also, but that project's moving along uh, at a good pace also. And that project's not being funded by the 25% of unencumbered TIF, is it? It is not. That is a TIF project. It's uh, 50% of a state grant from OPWC. And then the township is paying for 50% of the sidewalks, curbs, and storm sewer. And the county is paying for the other 50% of the road work. Approval of that actually predates the legislation that allowed use of the 25% of TIF, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. Thanks. Um, do you know when the Coogler Mill project will move to this side of Kenwood Road then on down to Montgomery? What's the schedule? For Probably that? July. Okay. I would say as of right now, middle of July at the earliest, they have to still, uh, we're already in the first of June, they have to pour all the curb, all the sidewalk, all the drive aprons, then come in and do the full death reclamation and the first layer pavement before they move across the intersection. So I'm, I'd figure middle to late July for that before they come across. Okay. Then the only other thing is, uh, as you remember, we uh, put out a bid packet for crosswalks on Montgomery Road where the state is paving. They, they came in and paved, uh, milled up everything. They will not replace our brick decorative walks. All they'll do is put that's white ridiculous. lines. That's ridiculous. The only thing. Uh, you think, that's that's yeah. bad. Yeah. It, looks it, bad. it is bad. Are, by the way, not I, to mention all the brand new concrete that we just paid for that they yeah. tore up. I mean, they didn't. I mean, new, brand new. Do they think they're finished with Montgomery Road, by the no, way? No, it still gets another course. Uh, okay, yeah, because the manhole covers are sticking up and the curbs are, I mean, Driveway curves are huge. Yeah. So, okay. It yeah. still gets another course of, of asphalt. Okay. Uh, they've been working in the daytime down on the Silverton, towards the Silverton end because of our residents. But uh, when you get up past Chetbert, they're still planning on that big nighttime work up through the business district. Mm -hmm. But they've, they've still got some ways to go because they have manhole adjustments to do. So uh, that's going to probably be at least a month before that project's completed. So a and Safety uh, submitted the best price for this, uh, $238,606.50. Uh, they are the ones that have done the ones that we already have in place in the past. Uh, so I have a resolution for this. And uh, I had brought you some of these before with some prices. We, we upped the uh, quantities. So that changed our engineer's estimate. This price is within 10% of our engineer's estimate. Uh, and it also includes some of the repairing the crosswalks here at um, Galbraith and Kenwood. The brick is okay, but the white stripes are uh, coming up. So they have to be removed and reinstalled. Those basically keep snow plows from damaging the brick. So that, that is in this contract also. So I have a resolution authorizing a contract for the 2021 Montgomery Road Crosswalk Pavement Marking Program and dispensing with a second reading. Motion and a second. All right. Any discussion as to this? And this is paid for by TIF also. Thank you. All right. Uh, if there's no discussion, Mr. Porter, will you call the roll on this resolution, please? Mr. LaBarbera? Aye. Mr. James? Aye. Mr. Weedman? Aye. Unless you have any questions, that's all I have tonight. I already gave you my questions. Anybody else have any questions for Tracy? No. All no. right. I saw you had a new photo in the new newsletter coming out, though. You've aged a little yeah, bit. Yeah, people are going to wonder what happened to me. <laughs> yeah. They're going to say, look what this job has done. I know. <laughs> it's, this, it's this Rhodes program this year. You've been working so hard, see? <laughs> all right. Very good. Um, moving on to planning and zoning, then. Mr. Miller, what do you have for us, sir? 
Uh, tonight, I have uh, I have two resolutions for you. Uh, these are uh, declaring properties uh, a nuisance. Uh, the first one is at uh, forty seven. Excuse me, forty five seventy Elizabeth Place. Uh, the violation is for tall grass, weeds, rubbish, and garbage. Um, we have not received any uh, actual um, communication from the uh, uh, from the property. Uh, there has been you know, some improvement of the, uh, of the, the trash and garbage that's, uh, that's on the property, but, but not substantial enough to, um, uh, to not move forward with, with the violation. So, uh, I'll show you some of the pictures here. Uh, this is accumulated. Uh, there's, there's trash and debris underneath here, garbage cans in the, in the front. Um, there's lawnmowers of questionable, um, um, functionality in the front here. There's also, uh, you can't see it in this picture, but there's actually a tractor in the, in the side yard, uh, that, that was over here. Um, there is still tall grass and, um, tall grass and weeds on this as well. So, uh, unless there's any questions about this property, uh, I have a resolution ready to, to read. How have you tried to contact the owner? Uh, they've been they've been notified through uh, courtesy uh, courtesy letters and then follow up with notices of violation. All right. So, anyone have any questions about this? It looks like this report says they've been unresponsive. Correct. They've been unresponsive, and uh, there there have been numerous complaints. Uh, the uh, the neighbors in that area have have called us frequently to ask what the status of this is. Okay. Uh, with that, I'll read the resolution. Uh, resolution providing for an authorizing removal of vegetation, garbage, refuse, and other debris, and declaring a nuisance for the property located at 4570 Elizabeth Place, Sycamore Township, Ohio, 4524. Motion. Second. Before we, have a, before we have a vote on that, just a question for Mr. Miller. Um, uh, Mr. Miller, the, uh, the lawnmowers that are in the driveway, are we, are we sure those are inoperable? No, but they're not allowed to be parked there. Any other questions, Mr. Desai? And so the, the other would, issue. So we wouldn't necessarily haul those off. We would just uh, we would just move those to the backyard. So uh, when we go into a property, you know, let let's say, you know, um, you know, there's there's dirty dirty patio furniture or something. We'll, we'll just move it to an appropriate place. We won't throw everything away. Okay. And, and the other issue, I'm just kind of going back to the, uh, I call it the cheat sheet, what's it called? The public nuisance information sheet. Mm -hmm. um, that sheet right there, um, I, I didn't see anything about there being any issues with, uh, with, with high grass. Did, did I understand correctly that there are some high grass issues out there? Uh, there is. If you look on the if you look on the side of the building, uh, side of the house, there was uh, grass and weeds that I showed to the to the board. Mm -hmm. uh, there you go. Those are actually weeds. That's not that's not landscaped. And you've got garbage bags in the front too. The and we have garbage yeah. chair. Yeah. So there's more than just the uh, mm -hmm. the lawnmowers. And, and I take it the uh, stuff we're seeing in the driveway has been out there for a substantial period of time? A very long time, sir. All right. Any further uh, questions or discussion from anyone as to this? In that case, Mr. Porter, will you call the roll as to this resolution? Mr. LaBarbera. Aye. Mr. James. Aye. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Okay, our second nuisance property is uh, 4229 Woodlawn Avenue. Uh, again, this is tall grass and weeds, rubbish and garbage. Uh, the owner has cut the grass, uh, but uh, there, there's still uh, a lot of rubbish and debris on the site. Again, the, the property owner has not been responsive to us. Uh, you know, even though we've seen some movement on the property, there's still 
substantial enough garbage on the site to, to warrant moving forward. Um, this along with the other property uh, was a uh, complaint driven. Here's a couch in the front yard, mattress side yard, garbage along the back, broken tents. And none of that has been has been moved or um, we haven't received any response from the from the property owner. Yeah, same methods of communication as the other one. Um, it's the same thing. We we always we always start out with a courtesy notice and then a and then an actual notice of violation. All right. Okay. All right. So if I may, I'll <clears throat> read the resolution. Presented. Resolution providing for an authorizing removal of vegetation, garbage, refuse, and other debris. And declaring a nuisance for the property located at 4229 Woodlawn Avenue, Sycamore Township, Ohio, 45236. Motion. Mr. LaBarbera beat you to it this Back time. Up. Thank you. All right. Uh, any questions or discussion as to this from anyone? Mr. Desai, any questions? No questions on this one. All right. Uh, Mr. Porter, will you call the roll, please? Mr. LaBarbera? Aye. Mr. James? Aye. Mr. Weedman? Aye. And I have no more active items for you tonight, unless you have any questions for me. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Miller? I, I, I have one. Have we gotten any update as to what is happening with the 11 homes that are supposed to be going in on Coopler Mill Road? Because the trees have been taken down on that lot. Um, they're being chipped away, it looks like. The mm -hmm. landscaping berm is being moved. Nothing's going to happen with parking deck or building until there are three houses in under the consent decree. Do you have any news as to that? Uh, we've been informed by the developer that uh, um, they're, they're, the originally contracted builder is, is no longer part of the project. And we're awaiting additional information of, of who, they've, um, who they're working with now to, to move forward. They're doing the groundwork, which is it's, it's legitimate groundwork. It has to be done before any builder goes in there. Um, you know, based on, based on what I've seen driving, driving down Coogler Mill, uh, I don't see anything out of line with what they're doing. Uh, but they definitely need a, a home builder in place to, um, you know, start getting things out of the ground. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're, we're waiting. We're waiting on a response from the developer. Very good. All right. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Miller? We will move on then. Uh, next, we have our law director report. Mr. Desai, how are you tonight? And what have you got for us? And you're, you're muted. muted. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just two items tonight. Uh, first one, um, just an update on the uh, Mueller BZA Willis case. Uh, there still is no settlement in that matter. Um, does not mean one will not be had, but at the moment there is not. So we are moving forward with finalizing our brief, which is uh, due on Friday, June 4th. Um, so uh, hopefully uh, we will get some out of court resolution to this, but as of right now, we are uh, moving through the appeal process. Uh, the other item is the House of Brow case. Uh, there was a hearing last Wednesday, May 26th. Uh, in front of uh, Hampton County Court of Pleas, uh, Judge Alan Triggs. Um, Mr. Triggs, uh, or Judge Triggs, uh, did uh, uphold our motion, grant our motion to enforce the settlement agreement, um, which uh, again requires um, modification of the signs in accordance with zoning um, or removal. Um, so um, Judge Triggs uh, agreed that uh, we had a right to enforce the settlement agreement he did, however, throw in an ounce of mercy for um, uh, the defendant property owner, allowing them 30 days to bring it into compliance before he entered the order that would effectively allow us then to go onto the property and uh, take care of the signs ourselves. And that's all I have for you. Are there any questions? Have we gotten any indication that the owner will be bringing it into compliance in that period? Uh, I believe uh, one of the defendants, not the actual property owner, but one of the defendants in the case, um, 
has uh, sent some emails to Mr. Butler, my colleague, who of course was handling the uh, the uh, case itself. Um, so um, I have not gone through those emails to see what they uh, what they deal with, but I suspect uh, it is an attempt to try to uh, bring them into a compliance before the order gets entered. All right. Any questions for Mr. Desai from anyone? No. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Let's move on then to the administrator report. Good evening. First thing I have is a, another resolution amending the 2021 appropriations. Uh, this particular supplement uh, appropriation has to do with uh, our two CARES Act funds. If you recall, we've got uh, one from the original from the uh, federal, and then we have another one that's labeled the Hampton County CARES Act Fund, and that's the reimbursement type fund. Um, we did not have all of the, well, a couple things. We didn't know, uh, we, we finally got reconciled how much of that money would be appropriate to carry over to 20, 2021, and we did not have all of it appropriated, so we would like to go ahead and appropriate the rest of it. Um, I don't think that we have solid plans on what this is going to be spent on at this point, uh, but we like to have it appropriated so it can't be clawed back. Uh, but the rules seem to keep moving around on this, uh, but having it all appropriate, I think is the right thing to do. Uh, so between the two funds, we're appropriating an additional $362,846 and 60 cents. The resolution reads, a resolution amending 2021 appropriations, dispensing with the second reading and declaring an emergency. Motion to approve. And a second. Any discussion, anyone? All right, Mr. Porter, will you call the roll, please? Mr. LaBarbera. Aye. Mr. James. Aye. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Thank you. Uh, the next resolution I'd like to explain to you a little bit. Um, this is a, a typical kind of resolution that's done annually at many, many townships. Um, we've been kind of silent here at, at Sycamore, but there are certain items that get, get paid or need to be paid even before uh, there is time for administration to put them on a, uh, a, a disbursement run. Now, in essence, you we're you're already or we are already handling payroll that way. We don't hold up payroll waiting for the next <clears throat> meeting, um, but we have been holding up the payroll related expenses, withholdings, benefits, expenses, those kinds of things, which should be paid right away uh, because uh, for the most part it's not our money. Uh, there's other items that are typically called out things like utilities, electric gas, cable water, sewer telephone, fuel, trash collection, health insurance, refunds, employee re reimbursements. Um, and then we've also in debt and debt service and lease payments, um, the debt service interest and principal have to be made by certain dates. Um, uh, and also we put in here the credit cards that we use and the, the withholdings items, uh, they are what they are that, like I say, it's money for the most part we've collected. These other items, many of them, what happens is if we get caught, the timing of the bills coming in, if we get caught between meetings, um, we actually uh, have the board approving uh, payments that include interest and late fees. And that's not really an appropriate action by the board. Uh, the board is really not supposed to entertain those kinds of things. And so it would be much easier on the flow of uh, paperwork to have uh, a, this resolution in place that would allow us to go ahead and make those payments. And you would see them on the next check run that comes before you uh, at the next board meeting. And it also saves on these uh, any late penalty fees or interest that we wouldn't otherwise have to pay. Now, all of these items that are listed here, are these 
items that would, of course, been previously appropriated. This would be approving the purchase order essentially in advance to disperse the money subject to our approval later. Yeah, well, actually, not only is, has it been appropriated, but there are purchase orders already in place that you've approved. So all of that's been done. So what we're saying here is it's just a question of administrative execution. The actual check. Right? The actual check. Yes. Okay. Anyone have any questions about this before Mr. Work presents the resolution? No. Mr. Porter, do you have any concerns? You're muted. Still muted. There you I'm go. Back now. Yes, sir. You're back. There you go. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand how this this never happened before, but I, I don't know how this, I don't understand this, but. Um, I, you know, I thought the things were supposed to run smoother and clearer and uh, less uh, going back and. I, I don't really understand what Mr. Wark's saying, but that's, um, I think it's probably something to do with the new system. Well, this seems to be timing of checks in our meetings as opposed to the system. It seems like it would happen under any system occasionally. Well, I, it, it never happened before, but other than at the end of the year, we made some adjustments, but it seems like every meeting there's something like this going on, a big long list. And I thought things were supposed to go a lot smoother, but it certainly doesn't seem that way to me. But you guys have made your decision. This has nothing to do with the new system. And in the past, the township has incurred late fees, penalties, and interest. Um, this is just another thing um, that I think makes us operate better and to avoid those extra expenses. Yes. Now, if, well, I guess one other question, this is subject to ratification by the board at the next meeting. So if the board were to decide one of those checks should not have been issued, uh, if it's for uh, reimbursement to an employee for something, for example, or, or other things, um, would we claw it back? Yeah, it would depend on the circumstance, but yeah. you have every right to, to uh, ask about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, why don't you present the resolution? A resolution authorizing the disbursement of checks for payroll, payroll related withholdings and expenses and other expenses in 2021, dispensing with a second reading and declaring an emergency. Motion. Second. All right, any discussion? All right, Mr. Porter, will you call the roll? Ms. LaBarbera? Aye. Mr. James? Aye. Mr. Weedman? Aye. Thank you. Um, the next one has to do with the uh, uh, the uh, purchase order uh, responsibility that we have to bring to the board. And let me just back up here for a minute. In place right now, um, townships have reserve money in every fund. And then there's also the budget that is uh, turned into the county and signed off by the county of how much revenue should flow to the uh, township during the year. The state and the county define that uh, reserve plus that projected revenue. They, they define that as the budget for the township. And indeed, some townships turn around and appropriate that entire amount. This township does not, and I think that's an excellent practice uh, because why would we appropriate all of the TIP money that we're not going to use in a, a typical year uh, when we have the opportunity, like this year was a good example with the 25% rule, then we went ahead and appropriated it. So that's the first uh, kind of uh, a step uh, to hold uh, our spending in line. Then from the appropriations, the next step, of course, is to issue purchase orders against them. Um, and 
Uh, so the administration cannot spend any more than the appropriations that the trustees have approved. If we run low on appropriations or we don't have enough appropriated, as you just saw in a prior resolution this evening, and there'll be more of those throughout the year because we've kind of tightened this up. Um, so the purchase orders are, are uh, made out against the appropriations. In the past, we had a practice of having huge blanket purchase orders with no vendor's name on them. From a, generally speaking, from a financial accounting point of view, a purchase order is a contract to purchase. And so under that, you need to have a vendor's name on the purchase order. So in switching uh, to having the department heads have more control of their spending and actually know what line items they're affecting or what line items they're uh, using the money from, um, we got rid of the blankets that you approved uh, at the beginning of the year. And we asked uh, the department heads, which is mostly Chief Penny and Mr. Kellums, uh, they run the biggest units of the, of the township. We asked them to go back and now look at all of that uh, money and convert those purchase orders so they have a vendor's name on them and they can serve their purpose as a contract to purchase. It also, and I think more importantly, and I, I have to give kudos and thanks to Chief Penny and Mr. Kellums and Deb uh, Campbell for making all this happen. Uh, uh, so we have sitting here before us tonight, 53 purchase orders, which I'd rather not go through one at a time. <laughs> But um, the first step is we, we are requesting that we raise the uh, approval amount that has to come before the board from 2,500 to 5,000. Um, we don't have, uh, I don't know how many actually fall in that range. We would still have my approval on the 2,500 and between 2,500 and 5,000. But under the new operating uh, way we're standards that we're, we're setting, uh, Chief Penny and Mr. Kellums and uh, Deb and myself, Skyler, uh, we will be doing more smaller purchase orders to kind of gauge our spending throughout the year. And I just think that uh, if you would uh, consider raising your approval amount to 5,000, it, uh, it would take away a lot of purchase orders that would have to come before you otherwise at 2,500. Once again, reiterating, all of this money is, av is available and has been appropriated. Um, and it's just uh, the change in the pace of purchase orders, if you will. There, there is a legal threshold in Ohio, isn't there, that is higher than 5,000 that townships can actually set? Am I correct in that? Uh, uh, as I may know. I'm not suggesting we go higher, but I think there's actually a higher threshold. If there's one at all, I, I yeah, don't recall. Yeah. Usually, it's appropriate. A board would set a level just like yeah. uh, we have. There, there's large thresholds for, for bidding requirements, mm -hmm. but for, for POs. Yeah, for, for administrative spending, I don't believe so. Okay. Um, why don't you, well, any discussion prior to him presenting the resolution? Any concerns from anyone? Rob, do you have any thoughts on this? It, it just seems like it's inefficient to me. I mean, before we had blanket purchase orders and I, I would defer to the department heads on that. If they think it's a good idea this way, I, I can't argue with them. But I, I think in the past we've had, uh, you know, large blanket purchase orders. So you didn't have to approve 5,000 to Duke Energy for, um, you know, utilities. I mean, utilities are what they are. And we had a pretty good estimate at the beginning of the year and we weren't doing 52 uh, purchase orders at a meeting. I, I think the same <laughs> applies with a lot of our, uh, you know, uh, I looked the purchase orders over and it looked like a lot of them were just uh, 
things that reoccur every year. And I don't know if you guys want to spend the time to go through 52 purchase orders. That's, that's up to you. But. I think the point of, of this is to be able to avoid having to do some of that as a board. The, the resolution that would be before us, which you didn't present yet, but it's in the packet here, is simply raising the threshold from 2,500 to 5,000 for the administrator level of approval, after which the board has to get involved. Am I correct as to that, Mr. Ward? Yes. Well, I that that's fine. I have no problem with that. I mean, it's just having all these, uh, you know, we used to have a large... Uh, uh, blanket purchase order that, you know, to CG or somebody else. And it wasn't, we didn't have to do one for each, uh, each purchase, whether it was 5,000 or 10,000. Oh, we still have large blankets uh, with, with now vendors names on them. There are many in the 53 that I have tonight. Many of those are blanket POs. They're not associated with a, a specific purchase. What we eliminated is purchase orders with no names on them. And the uh, uh, department heads would just spend from there. Yeah, it may have been easier, but uh, they had no control over or were not aware of uh, where the where the uh, uh, those purchases were being applied to the accounts, and therefore we would run into negatives against appropriations and even negatives against reserves. So it serves a couple purposes. One, it avoids that, which you're not supposed to do. Um, and the other thing that's more importantly for me, and I know it's not uh, uh, the favorite thing in life to, to convert over to this system, but it gives them control of the spending in the area that they manage. And I think that's very important. Is this more work or less work for our department heads? More. And more supervision of our spending at the same time. Yes. All right, why don't you present the resolution? A resolution establishing financial policies for the approval of purchase orders in 2021, dispensing with a second reading and declaring an emergency. Motion. And a second. All right, and did you have a comment, Mr. LaBarber? No. no. Okay. All right, any further comments about this resolution before us? All right, Mr. Porter, will you call the roll, please? Mr. LaBarber? Aye. Mr. James? Aye. Mr. Weedman. Hi. Thanks. Now back to the 53 purchase orders. Uh, most of this, well, well, all of these have been appropriated and been approved, even the larger ones, uh, like the capital expenditures that we've talked about and you've approved in the last couple of meetings. And many of them are blankets, uh, that were broken down into smaller amounts from uh, it, because they have the vendor's name on them. Um, it does not change uh, anything about what we've budgeted. It's in line with our appropriations or, or our budget and uh, uh, the money is available. And uh, I would ask maybe for tonight's purposes that uh, maybe you can handle all 53 of these in a single motion. All right. In, any discussion as to these? We've had them in the packet and in the additional packet we received today. And I, I think going forward, it would be useful to handle these POs in mass when we can with an itemized numbered list in the future. And if there are individual ones we want to pull out for discussion, we can do it by number uh, in the manner of the county and some other organizations do. Um, is there a motion as to the bundle of purchase orders? I'll make a motion to uh, to approve this bundle of the 53 purchase orders. Is there a second? second? All right, motion and a second. Mr. Desai, do you have any concerns about handling it this way? Well, it's changed. And I don't like change. So, yeah, that bothers me. <laughs> it's not necessarily a great reason. I'm just kind of scrolling through the purchase orders to see if anything jumped out at me. Um Boy, you know, I'm, I really wasn't prepared to discuss this as these are just thoughts off the top of my head. Um, I mean, the only concern, the only concern would be we're going to have to be really tight about what was in the draft package, what was in the amended draft package, what was in the revised and amended draft package. If you're just going to do a motion to approve the bundle of POs, 
you know, again, I'm just kind of giving my thoughts off the top of my head. I, I would it be too cumbersome to at least in the motion say, you know, the purchase orders for advanced turf solutions, number 128 2021, the purchase order for, you know, um, what's the next one, the Ohio Treasurer, number 129 2021. It just it concerns me a little bit that, that nothing's being tied together. There's not there's nothing being tied together. It's well, what exactly was in that bundle of POs? If you understand my concern, sure. Consider we typically approve check runs that consist of two single space pages of checks without uh, individually itemizing them. Of course, they are itemized on the check run we are approving. Is there a sequential series of numbers for these POs where we can give the starting and ending one? Would that satisfy? Your no, because reasons. there are some that didn't reach the 2,500 threshold mm -hmm. and they've been pulled out of here. Oh, uh, uh, it's not quite if, that simple. If I may, uh, this packet is, is, has a unique identifier. This is packet revised 6-06-01-2021. Uh, uh, that includes the additional POs we were emailed this evening? Or this afternoon? This afternoon. Okay. Yep. All right. Is that a so, sufficient identifier for our purposes, Mr. Desai? I mean, I, that certainly makes me feel a lot more comfortable. And thank you for that, Mr. Miller. Um, yeah, I mean, that makes me feel a lot more comfortable that we're at least identifying the specific packet. And presumably, since it's, uh, you know, an electronic format, uh, those documents are going to be, um, you know, um, uh, stationary. We're not going to have uh, any change. So, um, I'd still prefer a little more identification, but, um, you know, I can live with uh, identifying the packet. All right. Mr. LaBarbera, would you uh, amend your motion uh, to reflect that it's the packet numbered 6-06-01-2021? Okay. Um, I'm going to make a um, resolution to approve the uh, motion. I might want to make a motion to approve the uh, purchase orders. There would be in packet 0601-2021. And there are 53 purchase orders in that group. And that was to amend your existing motion on the floor? Amend my existing, well, that, no, this is the new the new. Well, we have, we have a motion on the floor that you're amending as a matter of parliamentary okay, procedure. So Deepak, to do that properly, then I just have to say, I, I want to amend the motion to... Um, include the, the motion. Yeah, exactly, Mr. LaBarber. You would just say, I amend my motion to specify the purchase orders in document package, whatever the number is. Okay, I amend my motion to include the uh, specific uh, uh, orders, uh, purchase orders in packet 06012021. It was 6-0601-2021. Yeah. It was 0601-2021. Is that correct, Mr. Miller? If I may, it, it's referenced as packet revised 06-01-2021. Yeah. That's, that's what I said. Okay. Okay. Sorry, yeah, I, had no, written, I, did say that. I had written it down incorrectly. And Mr. Oh, Weedman okay. was your second answer to that. Correct. All right. We've now spent as much time as we might have reading the 53 <laughs> so I think at this point, but Almost. any further discussion? No. All right. Mr. Porter, will you call the roll, please? Mr. LaBarbera? Aye. Mr. James? Aye. Mr. Weedman? Aye. Thank you. Uh, one other item I wanted to share with you, we had, as you know, we had our uh, quarterly JED meetings today, and uh, I had sent around uh, earlier today, just kind of a recap based on the township revenues. And uh, obviously we're all very concerned about the impact that COVID uh, would have on the flow of JED revenues because it is uh, a very big part of our operating spending. Um, I projected uh, doing the budgets for the four JEDs uh, in 2021, I was figuring they would be down by 5%. I used some uh, uh, formula to arrive there, but it came out to that I thought we'd fall short by 5%. Well, through the first quarter, which ended March, uh, end of March, we were actually uh, a little up a little bit at 0.3%. So just about even with last year when you look at the first quarter. And then when you look at 
uh, through May, which is just has the East, Central, and Northwest reporting because the Southwest JED only reports quarterly. But just looking at those three, because I did, I got the Northwest May numbers in uh, today. We are actually trending against next year. We're up 7.6%. Now, uh, Southwest, if they were reporting, their trend has been, been uh, a nice upward slope because in the first quarter report, Southwest was up 6.8%. So, so far, we are way above the pessimistic projection that I uh, published. The other thing is uh, Tom Moeller at Madeira asked us to do some surveying of the East and Central Jeds. And we talked to the major property owners and uh, generally speaking, pretty much office workers stayed home. Uh, their guess was only 15 to 25% of people were coming to the office. Uh, more are trickling back in. They're, they all said that people, uh, that their, uh, the, their tenants, the companies, were trying to wait and see what the guidance was. And uh, they think that more will flow back in now. They didn't lose very many tenants because of COVID. It, uh, on a square footage basis, it was minimal. And some spaces that uh, weren't renewed because of COVID, they were able to already find a new tenant. So I guess the moral of the story right now is things seem to be in good shape. The money flow is obvious. And just from uh, discussing this with some of the major property managers, everything seems to be uh, better than we maybe were anticipating at this point. Also, uh, the town center and Kenwood Commons, they made it through. Um, uh, no major loss of tenants. Once again, very minor from square footage standpoint. And... Uh, uh, their business seems to be picking up in both places. So knock on wood, uh, this may not be as damaging to us as uh, we could have uh, thought. Yeah. And, and that's all very good to hear. Good to hear for our businesses in the township too. I guess not to rain on the parade potentially, but we also need to be cognizant of the fact that there is state legislation pending and lawsuits out there seeking to undo some of the taxes that were collected by workers who are now working from home rather than in those zones. And I don't know where that leaves us. I think we've mentioned that before, that since it's technically Madeira, Deer Park, and Amberley that collect the funds, I don't know if under our JEDS agreements, we have to reimburse them if they have to reimburse taxpayers who put in refund requests. The state legislature's, uh, the current bill in the state legislature that looks like it may have some uh, traction there would require that any funds collected in 2020 from workers who were no longer actually working in the tax areas, you get to keep. But from January 1st, 2021 on, you may have to reimburse. So again, I don't know where that's going to leave us or whether we're legally impacted or not, or whether Madeira and the others might be very unhappy with us if our agreement didn't require us to reimburse them and they had to. Um, but that, that's something looming out there. So I don't know how that'll shake out, but we'll have to see. Fortunately, if all the reimbursement comes out, of, comes out of the bottom line. So, so if we have to re, we set aside money to reimburse to each one of our jets, and so um, that money would come if if that reimbursement occurs, we're we're going to reimburse ninety percent, and and uh, our partner is going to reimburse ten percent because it's a net net, and so that that shouldn't uh, our, our partner shouldn't be expecting us to continue to pay them because that's not how the agreement is written as i said i haven't had an opportunity to go back and look at it yet but i'd like to see that and mr desai that's something we need to keep in mind also in the future as to what that's going to mean but since the legislation hasn't actually passed yet and the court cases are still pending one of which was dismissed and is under appeal we don't know where it's going yet yeah, I mean, it, it creates quite the conundrum for, uh, you know, all local governments. Um, you know, some some form of discussion at some point probably should be had about, 
whether some of those monies ought to be, for lack of a better word, escrowed. But, um, you know, our situation is, is um, different than other local governments, maybe some smaller local governments, but uh, it, it really is, is, um, is a thorny issue. And um, I'm not sure um, where they're going to land with this. I was happy to see the dismissal that you referenced of the first case. Um, uh, on the other hand, I, I am very worried that and uh, you know we end up getting uh, asked to uh, to pay back money. Uh, so if, if that came, uh, I said that uh, the partnership they're going to. Um, Okay. Never mind. Uh, okay. Being recorded. Wait, wait a minute. I mean, Skyler just took over. No, post. not yet. I haven't. Oh, the recording came back on. I, I just put a recording to the I, to the cloud. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, Tom, don't don't do anything. Just hang on. Okay. Yeah. If you started one, stop it. Rob, recording. We're now recording. We are back okay. live. All okay. right. Since we are live streaming now, I'll just note we are recessed until 821. There was a power outage which took out video and some people have left the room. So we'll be back in a moment. Yeah, and I'm not sure if we're live streaming just yet. Uh, we're at least recording again. Bye. <laughs> Like seventh inning stretch here. That's all. Yeah. I hope we're past the seventh. I hope so too. Yeah, you know, we're past twenty-two minutes anyway. Right? Eight twenty-two. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> I'm going to tell Jason to talk fast. My time was pretty good, though. It was. All right. Yeah. Quick as three minutes. <laughs> that was faster than those, yeah. You used to have three minutes between classes in high school. Yes. And that was, you know, you got to get to your locker, to the bathroom. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, it's still 821. All right. We are reconvening here. It is 821 p.m. Uh, for anyone just joining us, we had a power outage with our recording facility. Uh, we believe we're back online now for the conclusion of the meeting. And uh, where were we? We had a roll call, Mr. James. Uh, yes, we can. Mr. Porter, would you please call the roll to make sure we're all back here? Uh, Mr. LaBarbera? Here. Mr. James? Here. Mr. Weedman? All right, you, you are muted, Tom, somewhat. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we were talking about the, the JADs. I'm not sure there was much else to say about that. I did have another question, though, for Mr. Warwick and Mr. Desai, and that's about the JEDD. Uh, with Deer Park. Is everything now in place for that? I know the meetings earlier didn't include that. But. No, we, we have, uh, we finally have an employee who works in the, uh, in the JED who has to be a member of the board. And uh, so he's identified and agreed to do it. So it's time for us to call that meeting. Okay. And I just got him lined up a couple of days ago. Okay. Very good. All right. Uh, anything else from your report then, Mr. Ward? I have nothing else. Any can questions? I add, yeah, can I add something? This uh, Tom Weedman's on board. Uh, Tom James is here. At the JEDS today, we did the two JEDS meetings we had. But the East and the Central, we did not do because we didn't have a quorum. Uh, I'm suggesting we do 6.30 as by Zoom. Well, you know what? Maybe before that, make it 6 o'clock. Six o'clock on uh, June fifteenth, uh, preceding our meeting at seven o'clock. We may not have to do that. <clears throat> We're checking into it. I think this happened one time in two thousand nineteen, and what yeah. we did was just waited until the next meeting. So I sent a message to Mr. Desai to take a look at that. But I think if we if we can't do that, then yes, we'll we'll uh, schedule a Zoom meeting 
for those two Jeds uh, before our uh, meeting on the 15th. I thought we were waiting to, I, I thought we were gonna wait to see if we, uh, if we had to do that. So uh, I think that's premature probably. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what he's talking about. He's checking just to decide. Sorry. Yeah, and, and I'll let you know that here shortly. I, my suspicion is that um, this was um, addressed to the uh, uh, former law director and, and he researched it and determined that it could be done. Um, you know, at the next meeting in September. So uh, I'm just going to confirm that and then I'll uh, get back to Mr. Warwick. Very good. All right. Anything else for Mr. Warwick? For me? All right. Let's move on then. Uh, fiscal officer report. Mr. Porter, what do you have for us? Yes. We have receipts of $643,554.26, disbursements of $463,000. $770.36. A complete listing of the receipts and disbursements is available in the packet. All right. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. And a second. All right. Any discussion? Mr. Porter, call the roll then, please. Mr. LaBarber? Aye. Mr. James? Aye. Um, Mr. Weedman? Aye. All right. Thank you, Mr. Porter. Uh, trustee comments, Mr. Weedman. Yeah. Uh, now that summer's arrived and people are starting to venture out on vacations, I want to remind our residents that we do have a vacation home watch set up with our sheriff patrols to do walk arounds of the exterior home while you're away. If you want to utilize this program, please contact the township to register for it. Um, again, I think uh, Jason mentioned the yoga in the park uh, is continuing to go 10 a.m. Sundays at Bechtold, and I believe we're adding Saturdays soon. Uh, check the township calendar for that. Um, we did have a Hamlin County Township Association meeting uh, this past week with State Representative Bill Seitz. There's some interesting legislation designed to benefit townships in Ohio. Just a few of those. Uh, I just want to go over a few of those. Um, they passed legislation in the House for the home for home rule, home rule townships to issue CRAs, community reinvestment areas, without requiring county approval. In the past, it was all, you you would you would pass it in, in the in the township, but you needed approval by the county. This this re absolves us of the uh, county approval. Uh, while I don't believe we currently have any CRAs, this is just another economic development tool for townships to enhance economic development without requiring approval by the county commissioners and allows us to better compete with the municipalities in economic development. Um, there are other legislation, there's legislation to allow uh, townships to pass the continuing service levies. Currently, when a township passes a safety service levy, uh, they cannot do it as a continuing safety, as a continuing levy. They have to, there's a maximum life of five years on it. We hope that we'll be able to that we will be able to continue to avoid all levies in the future. But this does aid a number of uh, communities who are uh, in a position where they need to actually add uh, uh, a levy for safety services. Um, as I mentioned before, Sycamore Township, we're the only township in Hamlin County that hasn't had a levy on the ballot in over 14 years, and many have had more than one levy. So we're in pretty good shape so far. Um, there's legislation to extend the remote meetings until December 31st, 2021. Currently, that legislation expires July 1st, 2021. Um, there's legislation that passed the House to hold uh, the earnings tax for 2020. I think Tom mentioned this before. For those people that work remotely throughout the year, but that legislation will also allow people that can demonstrate they did not work in the taxing community to apply for a pro rata refund for the time worked remotely in 2021. So I believe that, that, that this, this legislation passed the House it's on, and it's in the Senate currently, but I do believe that that legislation requires uh, the workers to actually apply for the refund, um, which quite frankly, a lot of communities offer that today. I know uh, my wife worked in, uh, in Cincinnati and um, uh, any day that she traveled, um, I would file at the end of the year and get a refund. So uh, if you're out of the if you're out of the city, you're in, you're entitled to do that. And frankly, I believe there's in uh, uh, Deepak. You may correct me on this, but I believe there's actually um, uh, language in our JEDS to, to allow people to do the exact same thing because we adopt the we adopt our partners tax uh, rules, 
And in this case, all of our partners, I believe, have that in their tax rules. So actually, it, it exists today if people want to really do it. Um, finally, um, as we originally reported, the American Recovery Program now includes townships in Ohio. There are three townships that exceed 50,000 in population, and they will receive ARP funds directly from the federal government. But the remaining 1,305 townships in Ohio will be receiving ARP funds through the state of Ohio based on a population formula. So that's good news for the Sycamore Township. We're going to be getting some federal funds, and, and that's all I have for this evening. Tom, I had a question real quick because during the Hamilton County Township Association meeting, I had a question I had posted in the chat toward the end, and I, I guess you didn't see it, but uh, would it be possible for the Township Association to publish a member directory to the members of the association? I emailed Cheryl Seavey about it, and she said she'd check with you, and I hadn't heard further. Oh, okay. So I, I think she was out of town. She left town after that meeting to go uh, to Florida for a wedding, but... Um, yeah, we can pro we we can we can look at doing that. I think uh, what, what what I'm more interested in doing is getting our uh, our bylaws resolved by this by September, hopefully. And uh, uh, but we can definitely look at putting uh, a, uh, a so um, we have we both have me we have members and we have associate members, and I think it would be good to have both of them in that in that book as well. So yeah, I can look at that. Yeah, I'd, I'd appreciate that. You've you've obviously got an email list for the association already, so if nothing else, you could share that, I suppose, with all the members. But Thanks for looking at that. Mr. LaBarber, you had comments? Yes, uh, uh, the 2021 VFW uh, Memorial Day Parade going <laughs> at Silverton Deer Park in Sycamore is like a great success. Uh, it's so good to see uh, so many people uh, along the parade route, people clearly excited about getting out and about as the COVID uh, pandemic uh, winds down. Uh, Chief Penny, thank you for the candy. This year, you know, Chief, I did not have a single piece of candy. In you didn't need years, a lot of history rules were missing by the time I was done. <laughs> but the kids love it. Thank you so much for that. And um, the parade ended at Bechtold Park. And in Sycamore Township, our guest of honor was a World War II veteran, seaman uh, Jim Hines. And I was surprised. Uh, this guy from World War II caught by surprise. Uh, his son, uh, Russ, uh, pushed him in his wheelchair up to the stage area and uh, Russ, Russ Hines and I worked together for many years at WGRI Radio. Great, great family, wonderful man, and it's a pleasure to have him there. And the park survey, uh, we've been talking about that, the movie in the park. Our first one is Saturday, June 19th, the Bechtold Park, 8 o'clock, Princess Drive, family movie. And the number one thing on that survey was music in the park. And uh, there was no music last year because of COVID. And we've got, we've got some wonderful bands lined up this year, beginning... Uh, uh, with the remains on Friday, June 25th at uh, 7 o'clock. And then in July, looking just ahead to July, July 16th, Ricky Nye will be at Bechtold Park. When you talk about boogie-woogie music and blues music, this, this man is synonymous with that. As a matter of fact, he was inducted into the International, did you know this? International Boogie-Woogie Hall of Fame. Rick and I, so he'll be with us on July 16th, and then uh, July 30th, Red Hot Riot will be at McDaniel Park. So looking forward to this, and uh, they have a lady in that group who there was a big number two record in 1969 called Love Can Make You Happy. Well, she was not on the record, but they sent so many groups in, in pop music make a record, studio people, and then they send out people to go on the road to publicize the record, and she was the, the singer for that song on the road with every city in the country. So looking forward to that. We'll have music back in the parks and uh, thank, thank goodness the COVID's wound down. Things are starting to get back to normal. Went to a couple of restaurants and they were packed. You don't have to wear, didn't have to wear a mask. And now the morning, nobody has to wear a mask. Masks. We wear a mask. A mask. Wow. Some people never got vaccine. <laughs> you have a list of those people. Throw some shade across I don't need a list. <laughs> That's all. Thank you very much. All right. Never did I think the word words boogie woogie would be mentioned in one of our meetings. But here we go. All right. Uh, I've got nothing else to add. Everybody, stay safe. We are, uh, there is sorry. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to, motion to adjourn. Second. All right. There's a motion. There's a second. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry. All right, we are adjourned as of 8.33 p.m. on Tuesday, June the 1st. Everybody, stay safe. Bye.